22 or 12 or 5 or 2. This is old one, huh? <laughs> yep, I mean it's the same thing. 0 to 250 and then 0 to 500. This hooked up to a, uh, you had like a digital meter went to? here are 502, the numbers here are 12, and these inner ring of numbers is R22. Okay. So if you hook this up to our, our unit and it's done equalizing at 110, then it should be somewhere around 60. 60 looks like 40, 50, 60, maybe 70 is not on there. So it's going to be it's around 65, which is the same. So what about if the temperature is 80? Um, when the temperature is 80, it's, it's going to equalize up in here somewhere. So we're not going to know. Well, you're not going to know, but you will know over here. When the temperature is 80, uh, it's a little under 150. Okay. So we can use When this. it's running at 80 degrees, it's going to be down in here somewhere. Okay. Anywhere from 70 to 90 is fine, but you're going to be looking in this range in the middle of a summer day. Okay. Spring morning when it's only 50, 60 degrees out in the morning and you're pretty sure it's not refrigerant otherwise because if it's 50 or 60 degrees, it might just be too cold for it to run. Right. Um, it, you know, it's going to be down in this range. So the other thing is, is once it's 50 or 60, once it's 50 degrees outside, we shouldn't even be trying to diagnose a problem until it gets, gets warmer. Right. Uh, when they call you and say it's not running, and you know for a fact that last night went down to 30 degrees, you can tell them it, it might come on in the daytime when the sun comes up. What, what I'll get is a customer will say, it ran, you know, I turned this on Thursday and it's Monday morning now. I did, you know, it wouldn't start, you know. I, I think it, it's not warm. It should rain three days. It should be warm, right? Right. Well, you look at the weather and tell them. While you were sleeping, it was off. Right. But when, by the time you got home from work the next day, it was running. Right. And you didn't check it when you went to work in the morning. You know, you were in the car out the door. So they'll tell you that it rained for three days. But was it actually running? And like, did they actually check it a few times? So that's another one we ask questions. Where, you know, did you actually see it running all that whole three days? Or, you know, is it? But basically, if they go out there and turn this thermostat out five minutes later, that thing turns on. As long as there's cold air coming out of the top of this unit, that's that right. thing is working. Yep. If you feel it, it's warm, it's compressor, not running. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just... Runs with not heating is one of my easier symptoms to diagnose because that's compressor related specific. Fans on, that means all of the 24 volt is telling you to run. Right. So all of those switches are okay. Right. The refrigerant's enough to activate the switches. The unit actually tried to turn on. The fan's running, just the compressor is... And you, you know you've narrowed yourself all the way down to these wires out to the plug and the run capacitor, which is the most likely problem. Right. Run but not heat for me is I grab the run capacitor before I can get out of the van, which leads me to the run capacitor. The way run capacitors failed. Have you seen a few of them? Yeah, we've had some, but I we really <coughs> haven't seen. Have you seen any right. blow apart or anything? Oh yeah. Oh, you have one down in Smithburg. Okay. okay. It blew all over, all oil over. Yeah, I mean, our, that's mineral. our start capacitors on our, you know, super pump motors, mm -hmm. it, it'll blow the end out where there's a well all over the place. So. The way that they're supposed to fail is that the can swells up, okay. and, and more specifically, just the dome top. Okay. Those two terminals at the top, on the inside of the can, 
There's actually two little touches that are touching leads inside the can. Okay. And when the oil gets too hot because something's failing inside of there, it makes expands sense. and makes the dome the the okay. top cap will dome up. And so they separate and, and, and then right. it just and that and that capacitor is now garbage. But so the we, thing, if we if we check <coughs> if we check the continuity of the arrow, it should be zero. zero. You, on those but, layers. But see, you can pick up resistance through the fluid inside it, right? So I mean, that's not in that. For me, it's mostly visual. You're, you'll see the doming, and more extreme, you'll see the top dome and the bottom will dome. And even more extreme, it'll rupture open, and you'll have that. <laughs> it almost looks like, you know, those 4th of July snakes you like, and they yeah. it, uh, it'll like come up out of the can a little. And it, all you do there, like people in that time, you can just did that. <clears throat> Some, yeah, they weren't good for years, and then they started going bad. And then, Okay. Back. One or two, okay, but if a whole batch is starting to be bad, then will they do the same? Will they trip the breaker and with the same? Not necessarily system? there. See, um, when this thing ruptures, I should take pictures more when they fail. Maybe I'll do that this summer. There, but when this fails and ruptures, you, you can see how close it is a contactor. If this wire pops off and it's tucked in, you know, it's sitting right there inside the unit. If right. this, this wire pops off and hits there, you've got a breaker tripping. Right. And the diagnosis isn't, you're not in your head when you approach it, you're not diagnosed as a tripping breaker, not runs but not heat. Right. So a tripping breaker, and you open it up, it'll be pretty obvious, you know. A tripping breaker usually is obvious. It'll be this be charred or some wires touching something, it should be. But, but this could rupture and not touch anything, and you're not going to have the tripping breaker. You're just going to have this thing not getting the unit, the compression not running because this is in, um, engaged. I'm sorry, Mark. Well, I'm We've done that over this test. We've done over this test on before and, and we think they're good and we think they're bad and we don't know. So When it's not visually swollen, um, all I try is a swap out test. If, if I think this compressor seems good, um, I'll just swap it out and try it for sure. And one last thing I'll try on older units is a hard start kit. I'll show you one of those in the um, it, It's just it's a start capacitor that just piggybacks. Like this has two wires on it for right. the way it's installed. You just piggyback around the two open things, and it actually helps start the compressor. Right. If it's an older unit and it's you know seasoned up a little bit, you may buy your customer one more year of use out of that. Actually, I've had some that were, they've been running as a run capacitor over the three or four years. But we've had to change them on new units that you've got sent us. The run capacitor? Yeah. Yeah, if it goes bad and then it goes bad, you change it out and you keep going. On, on an older unit, you'll take a brand new um, run cap out there. Instead of it um, not coming on at all, it'll turn a little and then not come on. You're like, this okay. one may be able to run. Maybe I can put a hard start kit on. I'm talking about maybe two units a year. And I'm doing, I'm doing over 100 a year, so it's fairly rare. But that hard start kit's one last resort to help that compressor before that compressor dies. It's not dead yet. It's having trouble spinning, and that hard start will, you know, give it a little bit of added torque to keep, keep it. So running. you're telling me that the symptom of the run capacitor is, is, is if the compressor's not coming on, or if it's blowing out warm air. If, if the compressor's not running, that will be warm air. The only way that that's cold is if the compressor has it moving where this cold refrigerant's coming to you. Okay, so it's you're pretty just automatic. Moving, and you're, you're, just, you're just moving air. So okay. When you put a new run capacitor in there, is it pretty, how I many, how does it take very long to notice that there is uh, cold air coming out? You're probably going to hear the compressor noise immediately. Okay. But that, you'll begin to know that noise immediately. Okay. And probably. Or four to five to ten seconds depends. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty very quickly. Yeah. You'll feel that area cold. Okay. 